Charlie Mayo was um, primarily known as a thyroid surgeon. Uh, at the time he was practicing, there was a real problem with uh, um, surgical uh, mortality from uh, treatment, uh, surgical treatment of goiter. And he, in combined with some innovations of Henry Plummer, uh, decreased this mortality from a very high to zero percent. Um, here at Mayo, we've had a long-standing collaboration um, related to thyroid diseases of all types, including thyroid cancer. And in the last five years, we've really had a, a group mature, um, multidisciplinary group across uh, pathologist, endocrinologist, radiation oncologist, um, statisticians, uh, many uh, individual surgeons, otolaryngologists, to uh, come together to try and improve outcomes for different thyroid cancers. And this has resulted in uh, much innovation in terms of clinical trials where feasible, and in anaplastic thyroid cancer, which is usually pretty rare. We see, on average, about five new cases recently per year. Uh, it's resulted in new approaches to try and improve upon outcomes that have been historically, uh, historically poor. Uh, mainly, we have not had a lot of uh, treatment options. These therapies have, have remained largely unaltered for decades. We're trying to change that here and have an uh, endocrine malignancies group within the cancer center that's really striving toward that goal. Historically, the problem with anaplastic thyroid cancer has been both recurrences in the neck, which can threaten um, earway, breathing, and uh, swallowing, eating, and um, also metastatic disease threatens patients in lungs, liver, bone, other sides. We uh, knew that even though many times we do not see spread disease at diagnosis, these patients will ultimately succumb to this disease, telling us that there must be early metastatic microscopic disease. We found in reviewing a series of patients uh, dating back uh, 50 years is that survival historically has been really very poor. And overall, both we and uh, many other institutions have found that survival tends to be no more than 20% at one year, with only a five-month median survival. We really found this to be, you know, disagreeable, and we wanted to do whatever could be done in terms of modifying treatment approaches to improve this. So the approach we chose to this was to add early on chemotherapy. Uh, many times even before radiation therapy uh, and also with radiation therapy sometimes after. So this approach was to alter both the radiation therapy approach and also the chemotherapeutic approach. And uh, we report the uh, results of the first 10 consecutive patients treated with this altered program. Uh, basically those results are telling us that this altered approach is producing far better survival and outcomes than we had ever seen before. In contrast to a 10 to 20 percent one-year survival, we have 70 percent one-year survival. Seven of the 10 patients are alive at one year, with 60 percent, six of 10, alive at two years, and five of those patients uh, at two years plus without any evidence of disease. I think that the, uh, the real surprise for, for all of us was the survival because we expected, um, well, I guess I would say we had really limited expectations and we were stunned to see the high survival. Um, we, of course, would like to see better survival, but to see an improvement from a median survival of five months to have not attained a median survival over two years into a um, a uh, examination of patients is really uh, stunning to us. Yes. Now, the issues related or the potential problems related to this pilot approach are, are several. Um, one is uh, we found that uh, overall the treatment, though tolerable and no deaths resulted from the treatment, we found that two of the ten patients required hospitalization during treatment. Uh, in subsequent patients, I think that that's probably an underestimate. I think probably half of our patients require hospitalization overall uh, in a larger series. So the treatment is toxic and it requires the patients to be able to withstand the treatment and be in a good shape to start with, which is not always the case. Yeah. The second issue is this is not a, a um, prospective trial but a report of a practice change. So we really uh, ideally need to validate this in a 
larger prospective trial which is formally designed. What we found is when we set up the practice guidelines, um, necessarily there was considerable individualization of treatment. So although the, um, the intended radiation and chemotherapy approaches were very uniform, that turned out to not necessarily be the case because of modification for various patient-related uh, um, prior health problems, um, side effects from treatment, etc. Um, we have not yet been able to effectively um, salvage or lead to long-term disease control in patients with metastatic disease. So this study really relates to those patients with um, apparently regionally confined disease at the outset. And that um, group of patients constitutes probably about 60% of the, the total. And if you're in that group, what I would say based upon our experience and results is that an aggressive approach combining intensity modulated radiation therapy, a tailored approach to radiation, with aggressive chemotherapy is um, is producing better outcomes, better long-term results than we've ever previously seen. And I would be encouraging patients wishing an aggressive approach to their disease to um, utilize, to avail themselves to this approach.